Sabrina here. Welcome to Ancient Egypt. Today I'm going to be showing you a historically accurate makeup tutorial. Well, as historically accurate as possible. Now it goes without saying that they did use very <laughs> creative items back in ancient Egypt's time to create cosmetics. So we can't be extremely as detailed as I would like to be. But I am going to get it as close as possible to the real thing. All of the facts that I'm sharing with you today have been heavily researched and if you love makeup and you love learning the history and the origin of it, you will love this tutorial. Now in ancient Egypt, this is where makeup was born. This is where it started. And during this time, men and women both wore makeup. It was a way of life and it wasn't just for women only. And makeup served a very vital purpose for ancient Egyptians in their everyday lives. It was vital to protecting them from a lot of the elements that they were exposed to in their environment, including infections, harsh rays from the sun, insects, you name it. It really did help to protect them from the elements. Even in the afterlife, makeup was extremely important, just as important as it was in day-to-day -day life. And archaeologists did discover several clay pots of makeup in their digs. And once again, makeup also served as a ritual for ancient Egyptians to honor their gods and goddesses. And I have so many more facts to share with you on this era, so let's get to it. Let me show you how to recreate an historically accurate ancient Egyptian face. The primer I'm using today is Lorox Behind the Scenes, and we're applying this on the eyes. I'm also applying this under the eyes. Very important so that your makeup stays put for this look. Our main eyeshadow for this look comes from MAC. This is in the shade Jealousy Wakes. Now, if you're looking for some cheaper alternatives, you can also go with Jane's Mint or from Maybelline's Color Tattoo Pigment line, Never Fade Jade. Using a flat paddle brush like the MAC 239, I'm going to apply this onto the lids. Eyes were very prominent for ancient Egyptians, and it's one of the most distinctive features that was really emphasized in cosmetics, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Now I'm going to go in with the Sigma E25 blending brush. I've taken more of that emerald eyeshadow onto the tips here, and I'm working this into the crease and blending it up towards the brow bone. Yes, we're going to go all over the eye with this color. You really want to cover the eye with this green eyeshadow. Two reasons why we're applying it this way. I've chosen to go with green because green was one of the most popular colors that was used in ancient Egyptian makeup. The green color comes from something called malachite powder, which is an emerald colored mineral. And scientists that discovered this mineral found that it actually has protective properties in it that prevent the eyes from getting any kind of infection. And so that is why Egyptians would put this powder all over their eyes from lid to brow because it did help to protect their eyes and ward off infection. So the idea here is to apply it to your eyes as if you did want to protect them from infection. So of course you'd want to cover the entire eye area. For this next step, we're going to be mapping out the pattern for our eyeliner. So you want to take a eyeliner pencil that is not very pigmented and really sharpen it. And then begin mapping out the pattern for your eyeliner. And you can do whatever pattern you want. You don't have to do the one that I'm doing here. You can be as creative as you want. That's the beauty of ancient Egyptian makeup is that anything goes, really. Their makeup style did consist of really heavily painting the upper and lower eyelids with a black line. And this black line did extend from the corner of the eye to the sides of the face. And again, the reason that they did this is because they wanted as much protection from the elements as possible. So the more area of their face that they were able to cover with makeup, the better protection they would have. So basically, think like an ancient Egyptian. Really protect your eyes. Go as elaborate as you want to go. Bigger, bolder, it's always better. And I thought this was really interesting. When the Egyptians would apply the paints on their eyes, of course, they couldn't apply them directly because they were in powder form. So they had to mix them in with something so they would adhere to the eyes. And researchers believed that they used animal fat mixed in with the powder so that they would stick better to the eyes. And then they would apply the paint with either one of their fingers or a custom applicator that was usually a little stick of bone or a piece of wood. 
And if you happen to make a mistake when you're trying to get your pattern matching on the other side, feel free to use a makeup wipe to wipe it off and start over again. I did have to do that, which is why I'm showing you here. And this is why I'm using a pencil to begin with to map out the pattern. It just makes it a lot easier to remove than if you were just gonna go straight to the gel eyeliner, which can be a mess to take off. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, everyone wore makeup regardless of social class in ancient Egypt. However, you could tell who was poor by the quality of their applicators and pots. Wealthy Egyptians typically had ivory applicators and jeweled containers, while the more poor Egyptians would use clay pots and small sticks to apply their eye makeup. And now we are gonna go in with the gel eyeliner. This is from Illamasqua, and I'm using this in conjunction with the Tarte eyeliner brush. And I'm gonna go back and fill in the lines that we created with our pattern using the gel eyeliner. And this is the point where you'd wanna start cleaning up your lines, sharpening them up, really defining them, and bringing the whole pattern to life. Now most people in ancient Egypt did apply makeup to themselves, but there were those few who could afford it that would hire professional cosmeticians to apply their makeup for them. And in ancient Egypt, they called them face painters but we now call them today makeup artists, which is really fascinating because makeup artistry, I didn't know it, but it goes way back. Really, really old profession. And once you have the pattern filled in around the outside of the eye, then you can go in and fill in the upper lash line with your gel eyeliner. Just draw a regular line like you normally would and connect it back into the wing on the outer edge. And once you have your pattern completely filled in, you can also go back with a makeup wipe and go along the edges to help sharpen up the lines. If you don't wanna do this step, you can also wait until you apply your concealer and use that to clean up the edges of the gel eyeliner also. Sticking with that same gel eyeliner, I'm going in with the MAC 263 brush and I'm gonna fill in the brows with this black gel liner, yes! Very different, never done anything like this before. Just like ancient Egyptians painted around their eyes, they also painted their eyebrows black. And this was again, another way to protect their eyes and their skin from the elements. When I think of ancient Egyptians, I think of very strong, prominent, distinctive features. And that's why I'm choosing to go with more of a robust brow in this look. Then I'm taking an eyeliner from Rimmel Scandal Eyes in black, and I'm really gonna line that lower water line. You don't want any flesh showing through. It should be completely black on that lower water line. Finally, I'm gonna go in with Max Typographic. This is a light grayish black smoky eyeshadow. And again, I'm using the Sigma E25 blending brush. I'm gonna define the outer crease of the eye with this eyeshadow. This is a completely optional step, but you can see what it looks like after I've applied it. It really emphasizes the eyes and draws them out. To complete the eyes, I'm adding in a pair of falsies from inkyminky.com. These are in the style Moonlight Dancing. Yes, I know ancient Egyptians would not wear false eyelashes, but a look like this just screams for them, doesn't it? And as you've probably already noticed, I did add in brown contacts also. I'm taking my concealer. This is the LA Girl Pro HD Concealer. And not only am I gonna cover up the little blue marks that I have underneath my eyes, but I'm also gonna use this to clean up the lines of the gel eyeliner and sharpen them up. And for my foundation, I'm using the Lancome Taint Idol in 100 Ivory N, applying it with the Sedona Lace 928 Stippling Brush. And I'm gonna set the face lightly with some translucent powder. Making sure to set underneath the eyes, also very important step since we did apply so much gel eyeliner down there. Last thing you want is for it to run or to move on you. I'm adding in a bronzer. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer and lightly dusting this over my face simply because I picture ancient Egyptians having more bronzed skin, more of a sun-kissed glow, and so that's what I'm trying to mimic here. I'm also gonna use this same shade for contouring, and I'm contouring the hollows of the cheeks. I'm also gonna use this around the hairline as well as the jawline. For my blush, I'm going in with Max Peaches and lightly applying this onto the apples of the cheeks with the Sigma F40 brush. Ancient Egyptians did use henna in their cosmetics, and I'll talk more about it when we get to the lips, but for the cheeks, they would generally use 
oranges, deep reds, and this would stain the cheeks and give them a rosy color. And so that's why I've chosen to go with orange in this look. For my lips, I'm going to start off by lining them with a Jordana pencil. This is in the shade Sedona Red. Okay, so let's pick back up on the topic of henna. Henna is a natural dye, it comes from a plant. It is still used today for body decoration and hair coloring, and it was very popular during this time. The way that it's produced is the dried leaves from the plant are crushed into powder and then mixed with water to form a paste, and this creates a temporary dye that lasts on the skin or hair for several weeks before fading away. Both men and women would use it to stain their lips a deep red, and there are still cosmetic companies out there today that sell henna-based lip stains because of the long-lasting effects of the natural dye. And the lip color that I'm choosing to go with in this look is from NYX. This is in the shade Monte Carlo. This is one of their matte lip creams. And I wanted more of a deep red shade, but I didn't have anything that was really deep sultry enough of a red. So I went ahead and took Max Dark Side lipstick and layered it over Monte Carlo. And this did create more of that deeper, sultry red that I was after. Whether you decide to wear this to a costume party or you just want to recreate it for fun on your own spare time, if you do happen to recreate this tutorial, I hope you will share it with me. You can share it on any of my social media platforms. I will have all of them listed for you down below, as well as all of the products that were used in today's video. And if you really enjoyed this video and this is the first one that you've seen from me, I will also list below all of the past decades that I have done in this series. For the next video in our Historically Accurate series, we will be going to the 1930s, and then after that, we will be revisiting past eras for more fun makeup looks. Hope you found this helpful today and that you did enjoy this video. I thoroughly enjoyed making it for you. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again very soon. Are you looking for new ways to wear your eyeshadows? Discover the only website online with pictures of combinations using the brands featured here and so many more. Head on over to myeyeshadowconsultant.com and get inspired today.